The original version of this video was uploaded to Jason Verney's YouTube channel, where it and many other videos, podcasts, snippets and films can be found. That channel can be found at youtube.com forward slash Jason Verney. This is the Not So Korean podcast, and I am Jason Verney. And I am Timothy Holm. In this podcast series, we talk to one another and sometimes with special guests about what we know about Korea, what we don't know about Korea, what we want to know about Korea, and occasionally what we don't want to know about Korea. Recording live from UK's Korea town itself, an area in and around New Malden. Basically, it's not just the New Malden itself. Uh, yes, it's the uh, UK's only Korea town and Europe's largest Korea town and Korean community in Europe. Uh, let's start this episode off with a quick summary of our week. So, what have you been up to, Tim? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, in these, you know, we're still. Sort of in the middle of the pandemic, so we haven't fully come out of lockdown yet, but it still feels like pretty much things are getting back to normal here, uh, at least in our local community. Today we had a farmer's market in New Malden, so mm -hmm. uh, there were lots of people out and about. Uh, vendor, There's a few vendors, not a lot of vendors, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting to see. I didn't really see any Korean... Uh, food or anything like that. No, but, it's um, not. I don't think it's that kind of thing. But you would think yeah. by now there might be one sort of local. Yeah, you would think so. It. But I suppose maybe they didn't. I don't know. Maybe they didn't ask the Korean community. But there, I, th I think there was, um, that uh, what was it? The Korean British Senior Citizen Society or something yeah, like that. They the, were giving out free lunches. Yeah, they're think. based on the high street, and they've um, they've been doing that for a while. Um, right. I, I don't know when it is. Whether it's every first Saturday of the month, or whether mm -hmm. it's every yeah. you know when they feel like it. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm yeah. They they give away free, free food to um, the old sort of the elderly or mm -hmm. senior citizens mm -hmm. or just people right. that need free food. Um, so, maybe also, I was just thinking it's to do with the maybe mm -hmm. um, to do with the fact that this is only a, they've only had two or three markets since the lockdown, mm -hmm. so maybe they're just there were right. a few more vendors before yeah. that. Yeah. I did live there, mm -hmm. live here before, but yeah, so interesting. Yeah. So um, and other than that, um, I, I the past week I've been mostly working uh, at home as I have been doing for the past, I don't know, over a year now, uh, for a Korean company. Um, so that's, that's my main job at the moment. And, um, yeah. How about you? What have you been? Up to? Um, well, uh, yeah. So a similar situation to you, of course, with yeah. the, um, you know, with the world getting back to normal and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we actually we did go for a meal recently, mm -hmm. uh, didn't we, with yeah. a Korean friend of ours who's yes. quite heavily involved with uh, Korean events in this area. Right. I guess that's what we should yeah. say at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's something we did recently. It's mm -hmm. a Korean related. But um, other than that, I've been. Um, yeah, it is difficult as well not having the structure that we used to have mm -hmm. before lockdown. Mm -hmm. I mean, some businesses have gone back to not been, gone back to normal. Yeah. yeah. But with mm -hmm. your work and my work, mm -hmm. um, whether it be freelance or something similar to that then we you know you don't have a structure but that that does bring me i suppose to what i yeah what i have been working on mm -hmm. and that is mm -hmm. uh, uh it's a, a short to medium length film that has a a, a strong korean leaning has strong right. it has right. a korean theme yeah. korean actors um and actresses and um and so yeah uh, yeah how did you come up with the idea for that film oh how mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a question I wasn't <laughs> expecting to be asked. <laughs> no, I do get asked that film actually yeah. that that question, but mm -hmm. um, I'll. Um, it's a long story, yeah. but um, give us the short version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you obviously know me well, Tim. Um, the the first, actually, I came up with a story yeah. which had no Korean mm -hmm. connection mm -hmm. to speak of mm -hmm. uh, back in September two thousand and nineteen, mm -hmm. when I saw this particular mm -hmm. location. Mm -hmm. 
And then I fed that storyline, which I we came up with this storyline for that main for the sort of the main character, mm. one of the main characters. Mm. Mm. And I thought, well, it needs some other element to the story. And it just so happened that there was a Korean story that I was I was building on upon that with mm. some, two other with two Korean actors. Right. So it's kind of it's gone a bit out of control, really. It's a multi, <laughs> it's dual language, it's mm. multi camera. Right. And yeah, it's it's been three different shoots. Uh, for, so yeah, yeah, I, yeah so. I actually assisted you on a couple of yes, those that's shoots. Correct. <laughs> um, so I'm th- yeah. a little bit familiar with what you're doing, but uh, for right. the for the audience out there, maybe they they're less familiar with it as you haven't released it yet. No, but do you know been... when it might come out and people I'm, might be able yeah, to see it? Yeah, well, funny it's just well, mm-hmm. funny to say it, but I mean, basically, the uh, thing is, without a deadline, you kind of. And without this isn't a studio film, of course, so it's not like yeah. that. But it, without sort of a target, yeah. a deadline, I was sitting on it, but still doing a bit every single day, and you know, and uh, correcting stuff, and editing, and post. But then, I'm hoping to have a version of it released, uh, released to a festival anyway, mid mid July, mm-hmm. all being well, mm-hmm. and then hopefully a cast and crew screening by the end of July, maybe August, um, and then we'll see what happens. Whether it's going to be sent to other festivals, uh, there's probably going to be more than one version mm-hmm. uh, released anyway. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, whether whether one version goes online, uh, there there might be one that's actually slightly more fed into the Korean. It's not fed in. Sorry, it's it's more sort of relatable to the Korean diaspora. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. I wanted to film mm-hmm. also to be a version where it can appeal to anybody who's not interested in that. Um, mm-hmm. So it's right. less less social social issue and what have you. Okay, well, that sounds very interesting. We look forward to it. Do you have a title for the film yet or not? Um, I do. There's an Instagram for. There's an Instagram set up for oh, it as well. Okay. It's uh, reparation oh. and it's uh, reparation underscore film i believe is the handle okay the account id but thanks for asking (laughs) yeah Um, so we'll follow that up uh, in future episodes perhaps yeah yeah so we we Mm -hmm. thought we'd um start these first couple of episodes Mm -hmm. we thought we'd um tell tell the audience and you guys out there basically Mm -hmm. what what who we are what we do but we thought we'd start with this episode Mm -hmm. start this episode uh with tim tim's story because it's quite an interesting one having been to Korea and all that um, but yes I'll pass it over to you if that's okay okay well I don't know where should I start uh, what do you want to know exactly Jason <laughs> <laughs> well what, what about where your interesting career grew not necessarily mm-hmm. anything too deep or personal uh, but yeah. living yeah. there for yeah, example it is a long story but I'll try to truncate it a little bit at least okay um, so well I guess it started almost 20 years ago yeah because now it's 2021 I think I, I first got some knowledge about Korea from Korean films, Korean cinema. Uh, there was a little DVD shop uh, in the town that I lived in in Canada. Um, perhaps I should say that I'm not born in the UK. My mother's English, but I, I was born in Canada. Yep. So, um does come across on your accent yeah uh i'm not american as many no. koreans would ask but um and british probably well ask. north american technically yes but yeah. yeah anyway <laughs> so yeah there was this little dvd shop in my hometown and they they rented out dvds of uh asian films a lot of asian films and i was just curious to like about asian cinema in general uh, so I watched a lot of Japanese and Chinese and Taiwanese, Hong Kong, all those films. But they also had a few Korean films around that time because that was just when Korean cinema was starting to get, you know, a little more attention in the West. Mm-hmm. Like the beginning of the 2000s, late 90s, I suppose. Um, so there were films like um, My Sassy Girl, Yapki Jagin Kunya in Korea, in Korean. Mm-hmm. Or um, Old Boy, I guess, was a little bit later, but I think I saw that I around was, around yeah, 2003 was, or something. Yeah, I think it was around then, but yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah, so I watched some of those films, and I was really, I thought, this is really, really interesting stuff. and um, Not for the violence and things, it was just well, the way it, it, it Yeah, that was it. part of it, I suppose. I mean, My Sassy Girl isn't that violent, but the no. girl in the film is a little bit yes, aggressive, that, actually. Yes. Um, so that's interesting, but... Uh, 
But old boy is very different. Yeah, that's a little more extreme. Uh, and actually, there was this like I remember there was a like a label or something that was called like Asia Extreme. I don't know if you know that. Yes, I think I've it's heard British. It, yeah. like, Isn't it Tartan, Tartan Asia? Tartan. Anything? Yes. So they were purposely marketing these films like as extreme, right, or whatever. But I mean, I wasn't interested in it for that specific reason. But I just thought it was very. They were very refreshing films, like very different from. Hollywood's uh, Hollywood films that they were doing at that time, right? Um, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so after that, I I I was actually at the time I was more interested in Japanese culture and Japanese language. So I studied Japanese language for a bit at university, um, but I I eventually decided. Uh, that I wanted to know more about Korea because I met some Korean friends in university. Okay. So they, yeah. they basically said, oh, you should visit Korea. You know, why mm -hmm. don't you, you know, uh, come over and you can, you know, hang out or whatever. Did, did you have any res reservations about the country back then? Because obviously... Well, I, it wasn't that I had any reservations. It was more like I didn't know anything yeah. about it except yeah. from what I had seen in a few films. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really know what to expect or anything. So, cause I mean, uh, I don't know how it was for you when you started to mm. get into Korea, but I think a lot of people, they know at least some things about China or Japan, but they mm. don't know as much about Korea. So it was more like, oh, I, I was like really curious, like to know more about it. Cause I just didn't know Yeah, much. I can relate to that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I one summer vacation, I just decided, okay, I'm going to go to Asia. It was the first time I'd ever been to a non-English speaking country. Like mm. I'd only been to the UK and the US before that. Yeah. Uh, so it was quite a big, big deal for me. Okay. Um, but so I went to Japan and Korea, but mostly I stayed in Korea in uh, Daegu and Busan because I had friends in those cities in Korea, uh, especially. I also visited Seoul at that time, but I didn't I didn't know as many people in Seoul. Um, yeah, I could go into more detail no, why I knew people in Busan and Daegu, but um, yeah, well, we can cover that in another yeah, episode yeah. if you'd like. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I visited there and I just, I really loved the culture. I thought the food was great and the, the people were so friendly and everything. Mm. So, uh, eventually after I graduated from university, I decided to teach English in Korea because they, they offered like a really, a great program for, for English teachers, you know, coming to Korea, yeah. they would provide the uh, airfare and mm -hmm. the accommodation and everything. A good salary so yeah I thought wow this is really good opportunity and I didn't have any other ideas about what I wanted to do mm. after I graduated so I just went for it and so, so just yeah. to skip ahead because yeah. obviously there's lots yeah. of stuff that sure, happened in sure, the meantime sure, sure. you yeah. were in Korea but what brought you to the UK this yeah. final time let's yeah. just say fast yeah. forward to that yeah so again it's a bit of a long story but <laughs> I, um, just before I arrived back in the UK, which was about two years ago now, almost. Yeah, no, actually, it's like exactly two years, because I came here July 1st, 2019, or July 2nd, 2019, okay. so it's almost exactly two years. So. Ironically, yeah, that's, actually, yeah. ironically, that was, um, sorry to interrupt, yeah, but no, it, yeah, in, inter, uh, mm -hmm. interestingly to some, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I actually came back from Korea uh, mm -hmm. from a three-month trip in yeah. Asian countries right. on the May... May the second, so yeah. it's only been like two years, right. but I have spent right. those two years in right. New Malden, uh, Korea town. But yeah, it's been a, it's almost actually like um, I was thinking the other day that mm. uh, I went from I was in India and I went to other countries, mm. uh, ended, ended up in Korea, which is mm. where I always go to every time mm. I go abroad, pretty right. much. Right. But the weird thing is, had I, it's almost like something subconsciously was telling me there was going to be this virus <laughs> and that yeah. you should live in, you're not going to be able to go to Korea, yeah. you should live in Korea town. Right. <laughs> so ironically, I'd already, I'd moved to Korea town for some dis different circumstances mm -hmm. and then this all happened yeah. and now I can't go to Korea. But uh, I'm at yeah, the next best, next best place, yeah. some would say. And, and I mean, I didn't, I didn't move to New Malden until last year. Uh, yeah. But I probably wouldn't have come here if I didn't know somebody who was living here, and that somebody yeah. happens to be you. Yeah, I helped uh, you a bit. Yeah. So, but I'm glad that I'm here now because yeah, it is. It's sort of 
yeah. it's not like I'm living in Korea exactly, but it is sort of a little more feels a little more comfortable or something familiar to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, where was I? I don't know. Um, um, probably that's probably because I interrupted you. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> so um, no, that's oh, okay. So yes, where you? Yeah, why, you why I'm back in the UK. Well, just before I came back to the UK, I was actually studying Korean in the Netherlands for uh, for a master's degree. I was oh, doing yes. Korean studies, so um, I just had to finish my final semester there. Um, and yeah, that's another long story why I was okay. studying Korean in the Netherlands. But anyway, yeah, that's we can cover um, that another time. But I just yeah, actually, originally I, I was just thinking of coming to the UK for like a month or two, just see. You know, just hang out with people and uh, see what was happening in 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 in, mm. in London mainly, uh, and maybe visit my relatives or something. But uh, yeah, I just decided. Well, why not just stay here? You know, uh, I like to hear. My mother's from here, but she's living in Canada now. But mm. I do have a British citizenship, so it's easy for me to stay here. Yeah. Uh, uh, unlike no, if you no were you issues with a visa or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not so, like you're European yeah, and yeah, yeah, Brexit affected yeah, you. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. So um, actually, yeah, I was thinking about Brexit. Like, um, yeah, maybe I should stay here for a bit and just see what happens or whatever that kind of thing. But okay. anyway, yeah. So uh, and then by the time I made up my mind, the pandemic started, and so I didn't really feel like traveling anywhere at that point so i'm basically i've been stuck here we're stuck in the uk <laughs> stuck in yeah, which is only a good yeah, thing yeah. which is a good thing mm. from my point of view having known you for yeah, several right, several years right, right. um so uh, yeah well that's fine well i think with with regard to your story and there's obviously mm. loads of stuff yeah, we can touch yeah, on yeah, again yeah, um sure. i think for now that's that's that sounds mm. interesting okay. you know um next time we'll do my story if, yeah, if, yeah, uh, if people sure i mean your yours goes back even farther than mine i think it's no, yeah. not quite no but um well it depends on probably how, you know what we want to talk about but yes that's yeah. true <laughs> yeah i mean we, we've known each other yeah. if we just talk about the korea, uh, the korea stuff then yeah and also i've gone from different different yeah. different, different directions yeah. and yeah. you've gone off in your yeah. different directions yeah. so it's quite interesting we've got between the two of us we probably cover a a lot of the Korean elements yeah. of certain subjects. Of course, we don't we don't claim to know everything. No, uh, hence we, we the certainly reason. don't. I mean, that's one reason we're doing this is to find out more because we don't know enough. So we want to ask each other questions, and we want to yeah. ask other people questions. Yeah. Eventually, um, people from our local community, and also people maybe in Korea or yeah. involved with Korean culture. Yeah, people that are not from Korea yeah. that are involved with Korean culture yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. and people that. Yeah. So yeah, that sounds uh, good. But maybe I should. Uh, we should maybe say how we got to know each other first, and why we started this podcast. So. Yeah, I mean that's that would be great if my memory yeah, wasn't yeah, so bad. Yeah. But <laughs> no, I can. Um, well, how we got to know each other mm. was initially probably. I think it was two thousand thirteen. Mm. Yeah. There was um, there was the, the Korean Cultural Center at that time. With they do they do a wonderful. In fact, that was one of the reasons I got into Korean. Mm-hmm. Fil- uh, films and culture mm-hmm. and went to yeah, Korea yeah. in the first place was because the Korean Cultural Centre had mm-hmm. they showed films so regularly for free at their place right. but yeah we they, they that year they had um, the year of four actors mm-hmm. they'd already yeah. had I think they'd already had the year of they'd already had the 2012 mm-hmm. the, year the year of, of the directors yeah 12 yeah. directors so they all came over That's here right. in Contec right. and E.J. Yong and right. loads of others and uh, then and they also had the Olympics 2012 mm-hmm. but then 2013 yeah. Um, was when they had the four ac- mm-hmm. actors, Moon Sori, um, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> sorry, my god, yeah. I, my Moon Sori, uh, uh, the guy from Old Boy, yes, uh, of course, that guy. <laughs> how, can, <laughs> how can we just go? Oh my god, yeah, we're just having some mind, uh, yeah, I've got well, uh, by the incidentally, while we're talking about this, yeah. we um, if you if you want to find mm-hmm. th- such interviews, yeah. you can find them on uh, my website, mini mini movie.com. <laughs> yeah, well, I couldn't resist that, yeah. but there, anyway, it was an interesting year, yeah. Um, there was some, uh yeah, uh, so, Trey, Trey Min-shik was one yeah, Trey Min-shik Min-shik. and the uh, Ha Jung yeah. Wu. Wu. He was the yes, other one, yes, and yes. we didn't look that up, by the way. Yeah, no, we didn't. We, just, <laughs> we, we, we were stalling, but we, we, we just our brains were, were luckily ahead yeah, of us. Yeah. 
Um, well, what I was going to say was, I think we, we met there, and yeah. amongst all that, what I would look back on now was yeah. chaos, yeah. Korean, just yeah. it felt like yeah. Korean culture overload. Yeah. And it still is now, even though the world's locked down, there's a lot of Korean culture going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, in fact, another plug to somebody else while I think of it is uh, LondonKoreanLinks.net. Mm-hmm. That is yes. um, run by Philip Gohman, uh, or Gauman, uh, depends mm-hmm. which way you pronounce it, but he's, um, he keep, if you want to know anything that's going on in the UK, not yeah. just London, um, he's, that website has pretty much got it mm-hmm. covered with yeah. a few contributors from others. But yeah, we met. Yeah, tons of interesting content on there. Definitely but, worth checking out. And then when I remember quite heavily, it's 2014, mm-hmm. the book fair, yeah. the London book yes. fair. Was it Korea was the market? Korea was the market focus country. Yeah. Yeah, this, the, the sort of the guest, guest country that year. So mm. they had a lot of uh, booths related to Korean literature and Korean publishing companies yeah. that were there. They had authors over, poets, yeah, yeah, authors yeah, anyway. Yeah. Chris and Lee some was translators there. were, yeah, gave some talks yeah. and things. And that's uh, actually where I learned about the... Uh, Korean Literature Translation Institute, which I eventually studied at because I, you know, yeah. found out about the program at that uh, book fair. So yeah, I should say that even though I've been in London for two years, I I used to live in London from 2012 to 2014 as well. Mm. Did you mention so, how long you lived yeah. in Korea, or are we going to cover that next time? Uh, in total, I lived there for six years, but it was sort of off and on. Yeah, you know, okay, I couldn't remember that. Yeah. But um, yeah, going to that, then then of course, uh, you were in Korea, I went to Korea, I've been there seven times, but there was a time when I was going to Korea sort of in October, partly because of the Busan Film Festival, yeah, right. but there was a time when I kind of made it a ritual, yeah. it was almost a religion, if you like, yeah. that my birthday was well, I was in Korea. Um, yeah, right. So I remember meeting you at yeah. least once, yeah, those birthday, birthday nights party. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you were there then. So we kept yeah. this relationship yeah, going, right. and obviously, what with social media, mm-hmm. and you actually, I remember you were staying in London mm-hmm. a couple of years right. ago, yeah, or a few years ago, and visit, yeah. there was somewhere yeah. I knew you could right. also um, stay, and um, yeah, it's those kind of things where we yeah. just kept yeah. in Facebook contact. And things. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's good. Well, we, we'll cover this in other other episodes, okay. um, yeah. but we do. We, we won't just be us two talking yeah. to one another like this no, but hopefully we'll be interviewing some other people soon yeah yeah we've already got mm-hmm. uh potentially got a couple of others uh lined up um just a couple of things i want to mention before we close yeah. this episode mm-hmm. um we just wanted to well there's well there's what's, the, what's of... the purpose of this podcast <laughs> didn't we mention that at the beginning where we, we where we said uh, yeah. what well, we want to know about Korea we don't yeah. but we, we let, yeah. let's elaborate on that actually yeah. because yeah that's, uh, thanks yeah. for mem- yeah. mem- jog- jogging yeah, my just to slightly clarify, older brain clarify for people who might be interested so yeah. we're, we're 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 wanting to know more about Korea but we're yeah. also wanting to see what people's opinions are on certain mm-hmm. things Korea from different angles mm-hmm. whether that be Korean people and non-Koreans because mm-hmm. it's amazing how many Koreans will have well, they're like any other country. They have different views on on the same things. Mm-hmm. For example, well, you could go you go down lots yeah, of rabbit yeah, holes on this, yeah, but um, there's the political stuff we want to cover. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the history of Korea, which mm-hmm. is so so um, so varied. Yeah, 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 yeah fractured. And fractured as well. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing mm-hmm. I was looking for. In fact, mm-hmm. that's you know that's mm-hmm. something that attracts me to it yeah. in in many ways. Yeah. But we want to we want to delve into those sort of topics mm-hmm. or all kinds of topics mm-hmm. and that could be from stuff that's going on in our local community mm-hmm. because we're yeah. getting quite in involved new, now new yeah, yeah. yeah in new modern we're going kingston also is considered yeah i guess part of korea down yeah well that's where yeah. when they say there's like 17 or eighteen thousand yeah. koreans yeah. here yeah. i think they mean worcester park as well yeah. and that but yeah. new modern yeah right kingston as a whole i think they, they've Very got some rural. and yeah. yeah that's it and worcester park and Sutton as well but yeah, yeah it's it's quite we're, we're finding out a lot of stuff it's amazing i've only been in korea town for a couple of years mm-hmm. I lived in a Korean temple for five months, but I'll, expl- <laughs> I'll explain yeah, more uh, explain more about that in another the next episode. But um, I've just learned so much. So I thought the stuff that I thought I would know already about mm-hmm. Korea um, after sort of a decade into the culture, uh, mm-hmm. filming events and uh, writing about it and what have you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's what what else do you think? Well, I mean that's mm-hmm. that's yeah. what we're going to cover. But yeah, it's, it's not just about this yeah. community. It's about stuff that's going on in Korea. What mm-hmm. our opinions are, yeah. what other people's opinions are, yeah. and also is it any way of resolving mm-hmm. problems that we think mm-hmm. yeah, could be? Issues, 
Yeah, so tackled. often people consider or they think of Korea as being very homogenous society, like very, especially racially, like um, quote unquote pure. Although I would debate that. But in terms of their um, ways of thinking, I think there's a very huge diversity of different, um, you know, different political views and different social views uh, in Korea and outside of Korea, of course. And then you have the different communities, the North Korean community, the South Korean community and the Korean Chinese community who all sort of mix together here in New Malden, right? So it's a very interesting place to live, uh, especially to get different, you know, different perspectives on Korea and what Korean culture is and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Mm. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, so we're hoping to get some different, like I said, different perspectives from different people living in the community and also outside the community. And we'll... We'll try to keep it focused each episode to one or two topics so it won't get too um, messy, so to speak. Mm. Well, then we could yeah. probably just close this with a couple of bits yeah. of news sure, that we, sure. we literally coincidentally found out. I mean, something you told me about was yeah. uh, Coldplay. Their new, mm-hmm. their latest video um, is uh, basically dance. It's, it's, it's filmed in Korea. Yeah, Seoul, right. I guess. Or yes. maybe not Seoul. I think yes. it was. I can't remember. With the ambiguous dance company. I yeah, think it the was then, was it? The, yes. Uh, the, the dance group yeah they're really interesting i think they actually worked with inalchi or linalchi which was very uh, popular recently because they did a series of video- videos for the korean um tourism bureau or agency or whatever they call it organization and so i think they are connected a little bit or the some i'm not sure if some of the people are the same dancers or not but at least they they worked together or they collaborated before so anyway, they're really, really interesting and good uh, uh, group of dancers, and they appear in this video that Coldplay uh, put on their official uh, YouTube channel recently, mm. like a week ago or something. And yeah. yeah, it's really cool. You see lots of shots of Seoul around the city, and I think maybe even outside of Seoul a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. So check it out if you can. That's good. Yeah. Oh, it, then what's the name of the video again? Higher Power. I yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a person. I don't think it's one of the. We've had this chat before. They were. Yeah. They've had, they've had some much better songs in the past, but they changed their style. Mm-hmm. But that's another. Yeah, another story. That's another story. Yeah. Um, one other thing, which was again, this is not something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just noticed something on the uh, Kingston, the Odeon, well, the Odeon website, which is about Black Pink's. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. There's a documentary regarding mm-hmm. Black Pink, which mm-hmm. were apparently a, a, a K-pop band. K-pop I, I'm not that yeah. familiar with mm-hmm. K-pop, and yeah. uh, we're going to that in another episode. Um, yeah, so that's coming to UK cinemas. Yeah, I think so. it's in the next few days. Mm-hmm. So keep yeah. an eye on the the Odeon app, which they've actually got. Well, they've got a great deal. I won't go into it because mm-hmm. we're not kind of promoting right. it, but they've got yeah. a really good deal at the moment for seeing lots of films in one month. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know if we'll actually be seeing that documentary, but if if people are interested and they want us to talk about it more, maybe we could possibly do that. But we'll, I don't know if we'll get much reaction on that. But um, anyway, yeah, it's I out wonder, there if anyone's interested. Yeah. I wonder if... Um, yeah, no, that's that's it. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But um, yeah, I was just thinking while we're um, talking of music, we might as well talk about the music that we played in on the show. Yeah, sure. Right. That's by a band or, sorry, a, a duo who mm-hmm. lived in the UK, that um, uh, lived in the UK a long time, uh, I think they might currently be in Korea, but their their, their name is Kaya, mm-hmm. or Gaia, right. C A, right. uh, sorry K A Y A. Okay. Um, the track is it's a version of Arirang. It's called mm-hmm. New Arirang. Arirang being the Korean sort of classic. Um, yeah, that everyone the, knows. It's everyone almost knows, like yeah. a national anthem, national although anthem, yeah. it isn't officially. Yeah, um, I and their, I think mm-hmm. their, their album is Korean Breeze, but the whole mm-hmm. album is very melodic, very mm-hmm. beautiful actually. Mm-hmm. I'm a, a, a Korean Breeze. It's called mm-hmm. and uh, by Kaya. Yeah, great. Great stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, just yeah. So, um, well, I think that's it for this episode. Yeah. Um, well, it's a we'll... good start, anyway. And uh, yeah, thanks for um, everything you've done so far to get this podcast set up, Jason. And uh, we'll talk to you again. Yeah, we'll, we'll see week. how it progresses, yeah. and um, we'll leave you with the music from um, Kaya with that song, um, uh, new. 
Arirang. So let's just, oh, yeah. let's just uh, put that back on and yeah. you can listen to it and we'll play it out. <laughs> 